Hi everyone, I'm Mary Burley, Chief Educator at the Norman Rockwell Museum, and I'm here with my good friend Stephanie Plunkett, who is the Deputy Director and Chief Curator. And we are so excited to talk with you today about a Norman Rockwell painting, um, painted in 1959. We chose this image because it is, uh, continues our celebration of girls and women this week. The name of the painting is sometimes The Jury, and otherwise known as the holdout. An interesting thing for you to think about is Rockwell's images. He, he made his images to tell whole stories, and he did not always name them. He would reference them. But as a result, when you're looking up Rockwell images, you may have to try a few different names to actually find an image. So, so this image is known in two ways, as the jury and the holdout, and it tells a remarkable story. So here's our question for you. Have you ever played the noticing game where one thing is not like the others? Well, this is an image to try that out with. There's one person in this image who has an opinion that is not like the others. Can you find that person? Uh, the image tells a story about having an opinion weighing evidence, and possibly sticking to our own ideas, even while also listening to other viewpoints. This is a great part of the American experience, taking responsibility for learning and forming opinions, and not just going with a popular opinion. This was a bigger idea that Rockwell um, referenced in many of his images, and, and he would be the first to note that every citizen has the right to an opinion, and in America, a right to a vote. So, Stephanie, um, there's some incredible things to notice in this image, and many of them reference the time period. Exactly. It is so much fun to look at all the details of this picture, the clothing, the haircuts, the fact that these people are smoking inside. And that is definitely not something that we see today. So it's kind of fun to think about past and present. One wonderful aspect of this picture, which we're going to talk about a little bit more later, is that Norman Rockwell is actually in the picture himself. And sometimes he has made appearances in his own artwork. So if you look at the second figure from the left, who's wearing a blue shirt and who's bending down very curiously over uh, the woman who is in question, uh, that is actually Norman Rockwell. Mary, um, you noticed something wonderful about this piece, which is that the color red has a very strong presence. And when you think about the color red, it is full of vibrancy and emotion. And Mary, do you want to mention that one fabulous detail about the shoes? Yes, well, I was, I did notice that Rockwell used a lot of red in this image, more than usual, uh, with the background, but there's one place where it shows up where I wonder if it's more than just a color detail. This woman, who is sitting up straight and listening to those around her, but keeping her arms crossed, she's wearing kind of a plain shirt and skirt, but her shoes are red. And I just wonder, Stephanie, what you think about that. Do those symbolize something about who she is and how she thinks? I think Rockwell was putting everyone on notice that this is a very independent person who has a lot of flair and her own opinions. And so I think he was very deliberate in making that choice. And if you notice, there's a gentleman standing above her wearing a bright red shirt. So Rockwell keeps that line of the red color very closely related to her. There's also another really wonderful detail here, which is that <clears throat> even though everyone is trying to get her to change her mind about her, uh, her vote, there is a gentleman in the right-hand side who is not interested at all. And Rockwell kind of uses him to create what we call visual contrast. So making things different from each other. You have a group that's all very focused and very interested and one man who is not interested at all. So that's just another fun detail. Have you ever been in a group, Stephanie, where one person was just not on the program or doing what the others were? 
Absolutely. I think we all have. Uh, <laughs> can all of you think about a time when that may have happened? There's another fun fact about this image that I thought you might have some ideas about, Stephanie, and that is that we know that Norman Rockwell um, changed his signature uh, very often. This particular image struck me because uh, his, he's written his signature onto the desk or the table. Um, what do you think about that, Stephanie? Uh, I love that detail. Of course, Norman Rockwell changed his signatures all the time. He changed their placement, he changed their color, he changed their style, all based upon what he felt would work well within his pictures. But in this case, um, this shows us that Norman Rockwell was so famous that he did not even have to complete his own signature. People knew exactly who he was, and they probably even recognized him in the picture. So that is a wonderful fact. Mary, um, I wonder if you'd want to talk about exactly what the jury process is all about and why it was so important. Yes, so Stephanie, in America, um, taking part in the democratic process by participating in a jury is a civic responsibility for all citizens of voting age. And citizens receive a summons in the mail saying it is your turn to be on a jury. And then it is our responsibility to go to the courthouse and be ready to serve. In this case, a group of 12 men and women discuss the facts in a jury room, and they have to decide on the outcome of the case and actually the fate of the defendant. Um, all jurors must agree or the case results in a hung jury and no decision is reached. So, so this is a cornerstone of the American political system. What's really interesting in this case is there is one female juror and she appears to be the holdout. And I think this really becomes an important image for its time. And Rockwell was really inviting us to think about the fact that women had a opinion and it was legitimate and important. And I think you have some additional thoughts on that, Stephanie. Um, and I, I'd love for you to share them. Well, you know, even though it's hard for us to believe in this day and age, in 1959, women jurors were still rare in some states. And in some states, uh, they were actually not permitted to participate on juries. So, you know, I think Rockwell makes a bold statement here in that everyone's opinion is important and that when we feel strongly about something, we have to stand up for that value. Yes, I love that in this image there, everybody has an opinion, uh, except for Rockwell, who is the curious observer and really trying to make sense of the story. And he predicts uh, into the future, I think, the role of women um, share, having strong ideas and holding on to them and sharing them. Um, of course, the women's rights movement was just around the corner from 1959. And uh, and Rockwell is noticing, and that is what he did best. So I love that. I love how he placed himself in this image. You know, I think that you have uh, some thoughts about something interesting that people can do in relation to this artwork. Would you like to talk about that a little bit? So Stephanie, there is something we'd like to invite our um, viewers to do, looking at this painting. As you notice the body language of the different participants in the painting, there are people leaning forward, sharing an opinion. Uh, the young woman is got her arms folded and she's listening, but she's also holding her own. We invite you to notice the body language of um, people in the next group conversation that you're in. How does their language uh, or how they're, how they're holding their posture influence what you perceive about what they're saying and most importantly um, are all the opinions in the group represented and heard before decisions are made we're very curious about how that goes for you um, stephanie and i have also been talking about some of the feedback from viewers about these quick picks and we invite you, if you are noticing things about images that we are not pointing out or that you would like to share with a larger audience, we invite you to write to us about what you're noticing 
and what you'd like to share. And if you could do that at learn at nrm.org, we would be most grateful for your ideas. So thank you for being with us today, and we hope to see you again very soon.